This video is the first of two videos that explains what xylem is made of, what it's for, and why that's important for arborists to know. So if we go back to the fundamentals of what a plant is, a plant is made up of different cells and cell types. And those cells are organized into tissues which have a specific function. There are tissues called transport tissues that are responsible for moving substances throughout the plant. The two types being xylem and phloem. Xylem is the transport tissue that moves water and dissolved minerals or nutrients from the roots to the top of a plant. There's only one direction. It's always from the roots to the top. There are two main types of xylem cells. In gymnosperms, you have tracheids, which are thin, long, and tapered. They have pits or holes on the sides of the cells that allow water to move through. This cell type evolved in angiosperms into vessel elements. When you have multiple vessel elements stacked together, they make up a vessel. This cell type is different because it's more on the squat side, it's shorter, and the pits are not on the sides of the cell, they're on the tips, so on the top and the bottom. That allows for a continuous column of water that just goes straight up through the plant. These cell types are actually what distinguishes a hardwood versus a softwood. Gymnosperms only have tracheids, whereas angiosperms can have tracheids and vessels. It's the vessels that determine whether a tree is considered a hardwood or a softwood. This is a very specific definition. It's different from what you might use casually. Like a lot of people will say a cottonwood has soft wood because the wood is literally softer than something like an oak. But that's not botanically correct because only gymnosperms like conifers are officially considered softwoods. When xylem cells are mature, they're actually dead. They're just empty cells that allow water to move through efficiently. For the most part, the water movement is passive. It takes the plant some energy to get water in from the soil, but once the water is inside the roots, there's no extra energy expended to, let's say, pump the water up the tree. The way it works is as the water is coming in from the soil, it sort of pushes the water upwards. Because water molecules have a strong connection to one another, they function like a chain of water. At the top of the plant, as the leaves open up to draw in carbon dioxide, they also lose water at the same time. So you can imagine a chain of water that's getting pulled out of the leaves, and then it pulls up the water that's connected all the way down to the roots. In addition to hardwood and softwood, you may have heard of terms like heartwood and sapwood. This also refers to the xylem, and it refers to xylem that's actively transporting materials called the sapwood versus the non-transporting xylem, which is a heartwood. How much wood remains as sapwood is dependent on the species, and as it becomes converted to heartwood, there's additional substances that get deposited in the wood that make it sturdier and a little bit more resistant to decay, which can also change the color of the wood. Not all heartwood and sapwood looks different. This pine did not look different when it was just cut down, but over time, the sapwood has pushed out pitch or sap, and you can tell that there's a clear difference between the outer rings and the inner rings. Although the substances that are deposited help the hardwood resist decay, it's not 100% effective, and that's how you end up with trees that have hollow stems. But as long as the sapwood is actively growing, it's able to make up the strength loss that results from the internal decay. 